video of mine someone commented asking about how to come up with some realistic lines by combining arpeggios and scales over something like a 251. So in this video we're going to talk about how to do that. Now let's take this 251 over G major which you heard me playing on at the beginning. It's just A minor 7, D7, and G major 7. And you can throw an E7 in there to get back to A minor if you want. So we're just going to stick with one position. Obviously you can do this anywhere in the guitar but when practicing sometimes it's good to just hone it into one position get really comfortable in that area. So if I'm down here, I'm kind of seeing this range here between the maybe second and sixth fret-ish. First thing I want to do is see some chord shapes around this area for each of those chords. So for A minor seven, you got this one. I'm seeing this, this. Plus all your A minor triads. If you watch a lot of my videos, you know I love to relate everything to chord shapes. It's just easier for visualization purposes. And there I was playing some drop two seventh chord inversions, which are super useful. I highly recommend learning those. If you want to dive in and master your chords up and down the neck, check out my guitar course. It's called Ultimate Chord Mastery. I'll link it in the description below, along with a discount code for you guys. And if you're enjoying the video, please leave a comment, like, subscribe. It just helps me out so I can continue making videos like this for you guys. And now let's look at D7. So D7 here, maybe I'll see this chord, or this, or my drop two seventh chords. Drop three seventh chords. Trying to stay in this area. G major seven, obviously we got this one. Anything else you can see. We just want to get familiar with where those chord tones are for each of those chords. And as you're doing this, if this is kind of new to you, take it one chord at a time. So just start with A minor seven to start in that area. And then what you want to do is link up your arpeggio shapes visually with those chords. And I have another video on how to do that on my channel. But just to show you what I mean, if I'm playing an A minor seven arpeggio, Within that, I want to visualize some chord shapes. So I'm seeing on top here, I'm really hitting all those down the line on the fifth fret there. Right here, right here, and then chord tones, a little triad here. This shape helps too. So you could call this step two, I guess, finding your arpeggio shapes and just relating them to some chord shapes so that you can really lock them in in that area. And again, I'm staying in that position. You know, you could play that arpeggio a number of ways. But we're gonna stay in this position here. You would do the same thing with each chord. So D7. G major seven would be right here. You could also play that kind of up in that area if you want. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's try combining these in the chord progression. So the first step would be playing those arpeggios in time over each of those chords. Let's say we're doing one measure of A minor seven, one measure of D seven, and two measures of G major seven. What that's gonna look like for most people at the beginning is this. So what I did there is I kept jumping back to that low E string to restart the arpeggio, right? What we actually want to do is voice lead from one arpeggio to the next. So all I mean by that is when you're done with the A minor seven, find the next closest note in D seven. And if it brings you up here, maybe descend down. And then when you're done with D seven, you can ascend back up for G major seven. So it might look like this.
ascending, descending, and back up. Now some of you watching this may have already done this sort of practice. If you haven't, I highly recommend doing it. It's just gonna lock in those shapes for you. Real quick, we're gonna talk about what scale you can use for each of these chords. So the overarching scale, since we're in the key of G major, would be a G major scale. <laughs> So all those notes are fair game. Over the D7, you have some options to bring in some tension notes. And usually people will pick either the altered scale or the diminished scale. So the altered scale, you can think of it as going a half step up from the root of the chord. So in this case, D, because we're doing this over D7 and playing a melodic minor scale. It's basically the seventh mode of a melodic minor scale. So it looks like this. And it just gives you a lot of nice tension notes to work with. You have a flat nine, sharp nine, sharp four, and a sharp five. Now the diminished scale. Gives you a flat nine, sharp nine, sharp four, and then there's a natural five and a natural six. I like to think of the main difference between the two is that six. So the diminished scale has a natural six, the altered scale has a flat six or a sharp five. So with all that information there, we have enough to start coming up with some lines here. So when you're playing over chord changes in general, it's good to focus your ideas around chord tones. And your chord tones come from your arpeggios, right? So that's why I like to focus this whole thing around arpeggios. To start, most scale notes that you bring in should be used to lead into a chord chord tone, just to get you into the feel of how to phrase these lines. And what you'll also notice is that the notes of the arpeggios are actually included in scales. So even if we pick an altered scale to play over our D7, you can still find some arpeggios within that scale. So I'm going to show you an example of something I might play over a 2 5 one <laughs> I just think the best way to do this is give you guys an example. So let's break that apart a little bit. Over the A minor seven, you could think, oh, that's just G major scale, right? But what I'm thinking when I'm playing that is actually A minor seven arpeggio with a nine in there. So a normal A minor seven arpeggio would be root, flat three, five, and seven. I'm just thinking instead of the root, I like to kind of dress it up usually. So I'll add a nine instead of the root or a two. It's so the same thing as a C major seven arpeggio, which is the relative major of A minor. Works great over A minor. So even though here, those first four notes are one, two, three, and five in a G major scale. And then I finally get to that A minor nine arpeggio there. I'm really thinking of these first four notes as a way to lead into that, almost like an enclosure or like I'm surrounding the starting point of that arpeggio. So you'll see, I'm kind of playing the notes around this note right here, my minor third. And it just sounds good. It's, it's focusing the idea around that chord tone. Now here's when we're switching to D7. You can hear the direction of this line is kind of going up, right? So I'm just going up to a close by chord tone in a D7 altered. Now, if I was just doing a straight D7, I might choose this note because that's the fifth of D7. But I'm thinking, I wanna dress this up a little bit. I'm gonna do a sharp five. We know that sharp five is from the altered scale, right? So first of all, I'm picturing a D7 sharp five in the back of my head, just cause it's gonna help. But also I know that that sharp five is part of the altered scale. So I might as well continue maybe back down cause I wanna stay in this area. And I'll make this next idea an altered idea over D7. So right there, those notes are all within a D altered scale. But more so than that, it's actually also an arpeggio. It's actually an E flat minor six arpeggio. And that makes sense because earlier we talked about how the altered scale, is just like going up a half step from your root and playing a melodic minor scale, right? You can think D altered is similar to E flat minor major. So it makes sense that this would be some sort of E flat minor arpeggio. And you can find these arpeggios within the scale just by starting on each note of the scale. So if I were doing this in G major, for example, you could go, right? That's like your first arpeggio, G major seven. Then you could start on the second note of the scale play an arpeggio from there. And it gives you a bunch of arpeggios. So here, I'm actually playing a note from outside the scale right here. But that's because the next chord being G major seven, 
I'm looking ahead and seeing where's a close by chord tone in G major seven to where I'm kind of ending up here. So I'm kind of shooting for this five. I'm enclosing it actually with a chromatic note. And that's a great way to lead into chord tones. So again, remember I said, just focus your ideas around chord tones. Even if you were just thinking one, three, five of G major, that gives you so much to work with in terms of how to surround those notes. You can just use chromatic notes to surround them, right? I could go, here's the one, if I was leading there, I could go. Here's the three, I could go, right? different enclosures surrounding chord tones in G major. So we got arpeggios, voice lead those arpeggios and this works really well in those transition points as you're going from one chord to another. And then look ahead, target chord tones and use enclosures to get where you need to go. So it's overwhelming to start just coming up with your own lines because there's so much you can do. So here's how I would start. I would start by just focusing on the arpeggios and then dressing them up with tensions or enclosures or notes from the scale. So let's say you're doing that. Let's say you just start on this A minor seven. And then you find the next closest note in D7 and come down that one. And then you resolve on a chord tone in G major seven near where you ended up. So maybe I'll go to this third here. So we got. Now we're just gonna dress this up kind of one step at a time. And there are a million ways to do this, but let's start with some tensions. So for the A minor seven, instead of that root, let's just add in a nine. So I'm gonna do this. You could take it a step further and replace the fifths with fours. Now over A minor. Gives you like an A minor 11 add nine sound. So we went from this to this. Now for the D7, here's where I really like to add a lot of tension here. So let's say we add a flat nine. Flat nine is a great tension over a five chord. You'll start to get used to what tensions sound good where, especially if you're also transcribing other people. Highly recommend doing that, but also just from experimenting yourself. So even if we just did the flat nine, it would look like this. And that's actually a diminished arpeggio right there. The flat nine's both in the altered scale and the diminished scale. Usually I like to pick one of those sounds to go for. So let's do altered again here and I'll show you what diminished could sound like too. If we did altered, we're gonna bring that five to either a flat five or sharp five. Sharp five would sound like this. Flat five would sound like this. And you may start to notice that you're actually building some other arpeggios that way. I just played an A flat seven arpeggio which is the tritone of D7, but it's the same thing as a D7 with a flat nine and a flat five. The first one was like an E flat minor six again, right? But it's really just D7 with a flat nine and a sharp five. And then our resolution note being the third of G major. So let's say we combine that A minor 11 add nine arpeggio with the D7 with the flat nine and the sharp five, or you could think of it as E flat minor six. So it sounds like this. So a lot more tension, but still sounds like you're just going up an arpeggio and down an arpeggio. So here you can start to mix up the order of notes if you want. And that's actually really hard to do just sticking with those same notes. So here's where notes from the scale come in and chromatic notes if you want them as well. So let's say I want to keep that same trajectory of the line, like kind of going up for the A minor, down for D7 and resolving on a chord tone of G major seven. I'm going to do that thing of trying to enclose a chord tone to start my A minor seven. So instead of just starting right on the arpeggio, I'm going to pick a chord tone. Let's say I pick the flat three here. And I'm just gonna enclose that with some chromatic notes. So I'll play a chromatic note below, which is inside the G major scale also. I'll play two chromatic notes above, which is also in the G major scale. And then here's my note from outside the scale that's being used to get to that C. So basically just enclosing that note, right? Getting closer and closer to that note, landing on it there. Then from there I can go up an arpeggio. Let's say I just do the A minor nine. 
flat third, fifth, flat seven, nine. Here I didn't end up in the same spot, obviously. The first time I ended up up here, here I'm ending here. So let's just see where this takes us. We're just experimenting right now. So I'll pick a close by chord tone in D7. If I was going to regular D7, I could go to this flat seven or this fifth. So I could go. Right, something like that. That would just be. That's just D7 going down and back up and then landing on a chord tone in G major seven. But that's not super interesting to me. So maybe I'll bring in some tension notes there too. Maybe I'll hit that sharp five there. And here we could do an arpeggio based idea, right? We could go something like that, right? We could do something like, or we could just go right up a D altered scale from there and then land on a chord tone in G major seven. So then we would have But there, I don't really like just going up and down the scale. So maybe I'll play like some sort of scale pattern. So I could go. And then land on a chord tone in G major seven. And you'll figure out what you like. Like here, I, I don't love that actually because this note is a chord tone of G major seven already. And then I'm jumping to a nine here. So that feels a little bit anticlimactic for me to hit a chord tone already of the G major seven before we get there. So here I can combine the scale and the arpeggio. So, so here's the scale pattern. The next note in that scale pattern would be D, the root here. And here maybe I'll just come down some sort of D seven altered arpeggio. And this whole time I'm thinking about where I'm going. So if I'm coming down, I know I'm gonna end up down here for G major seven. I'm gonna pick one of those chord tones down there. So I might do this. Right, so that I'm leading into that D, that fifth of the G major seven from a half step up. So that was root, sharp five, third, flat nine, and then landing on the fifth of G major. I could also do just the sharp five. I could go root, sharp five, third, root. But then here you'll see I'm already on a chord tone of G. So maybe I jump then to the nine or something. So. Or. And you can do any variation of that, you know. Or. That one I was doing more of a D diminished idea. So within the D half whole diminished scale, you have this B triad. All those notes are within that scale. But if you include the root, the D, in that arpeggio, it gives you a four note arpeggio. That just really highlights that diminished sound. Because in D7, you got the root, you got the flat nine, you got a third, and you got a natural six. Which we talked about is pretty much that main difference between the diminished scale and the altered scale. That's six right there. So. I noticed actually that we're kind of branching out from this main position we started with, but one way to practice this would be to stick with that position and just get comfortable with those notes there. Start with arpeggios, replace some of those arpeggio notes with tension notes, and then see what happens when you enclose a chord tone. It's gonna change the structure of your phrase, so you're gonna end up in different places. You can figure out where then to place that in the measure. We haven't even talked about how to rhythmically alter these, but I think that's a topic for another video. But I'd highly recommend starting with that structure of eight eighth notes for the two chord, eight eighth notes for the five chord, and just resolving on a chord tone in the one chord. It's just gonna set up your phrases for better resolutions. The phrasing is gonna sound better. And then you can mess with the rhythms when you get more comfortable with the harmony itself. And I know this video, we didn't really focus on chords so much, but knowing your chord shapes up and down the neck is super key to helping you visualize all this stuff, these scales, these arpeggios, licks, whatever you're doing. So I highly recommend you check out Ultimate Chord Mastery if you're interested interested in really unlocking the guitar neck like that. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.